Hello everyone, Schoolhouse Intuitive Tarot. We're here to do a timeless channeled messages reading. Uh, you may find you strongly resonate with this if you're a Libra or you have Libra in your chart. So I'm gonna say it's for Libras, but it's also really for anyone who finds this message whenever you find it. Um, so, you know, I may call it something like Libra June or Libra July, whatever, but it's it's really, it is for the collective and it is, um, it's for cross watchers. It's for everyone, really. And and I'm it's I'm recording this right now on the first day of summer in the U.S. And um, I've been getting I'm definitely called to do this reading. I just said that, and and a butterfly came right up. So um, this is about it's a period right now of big spiritual transformation for some of you. A lot of um, healing work, closing out cycles, um, trying to figure out if there is anything or anyone holding you back, that sort of thing. Now, some of you, I know you'll leave comments probably saying that, well, at least I, I've i seen some comments about how people are saying, nope, this isn't my reading, like this, or this is, um, you know, I've already done all the healing, I've already had the closure and et cetera. That's, that's great, that's your story. It's, I'm here today to help those who uh, want, want the healing, want the help, um, who do feel that maybe there is something else left to discover, uncover, disconnect from maybe, or connect with more strongly. So that's really the goal of this reading. Um, and it, my goal here for the whole channel is, is to really have this be a supportive, loving community of uh, healing and spiritual growth. And however that, you know, connects to you, if it does, um, so I do want to thank my subscribers and viewers and um, just for supporting the channel and this healing journey that we're on together. All right, so I do feel that if we heal ourselves, we heal the world. As corny as it may sound, that's what I believe strongly. I was called to do this reading today because we just had a very powerful Gemini moon thing too. And it's going to come up throughout this reading um, as far as the power of intention thoughts manifestation at this time it's super powerful so that's why it's a great time to be doing this spiritual growth work together you have be impeccable with your word release the need to be right now this could be your energy or someone you're dealing with um getting getting involved into conversations and situations where there's sort of you know that five of five of wands energy where it's like chaos conflict just not being able to really work well together uh the cooperation maybe isn't there those are to be avoided at this time especially i mean you know we never want to be in those situations but sometimes we are it's critical right now all that's going on astrologically um i actually found this um just a little side note Pam Gregory Astrology. I just found that on YouTube recently. And this person is incredible. The way they describe um, all that's going on and give us sort of key dates to watch out for. And it kind of really helped me understand what I've been feeling lately. So maybe check that out. Um, I heard of it through Dane Hart Tarot. Or is it Dane Hart Intuitive Tarot? Anyway, I, I happened to come across one of their videos and then I saw this link to Pam and so I found Pam that way. Anyway, no affiliation or anything. I just was on YouTube like you, you know. <laughs> um, but this is about when you believe something you're in, you know, and you assume you're right. Um, this, this can destroy relationships if you're just trying to defend your positions. If you're, if you're like put in a position where you know it's just conflict and it's not going anywhere and it just isn't aligning with your truth and what what feels best and right to you it's about um uh avoiding those kind of situations particularly now because we did have that very powerful new moon in gemini and um we have a lot of other things going on astrologically that that it's just so important for us to be mindful of our th our thoughts becoming words and things and actions and patterns and habits. And if you have let go of some things that, you know, remember and honor all the healing work you have done, Libras and the collective, remember how hard you have worked because you didn't do all that to turn around and go back to something that is not your greatest, highest good. And again, astrologically, from what I'm hearing, we are going to be very tempted right now. It's almost like the universe saying, did you really learn this lesson? And 
will decide if we did or not by the choices that we make and by the intentions and the um the thoughts that we we ha have right now i've seen it play out in a life already recently uh in the in the lives of those i know as well as my own life where <clears throat> I'm thinking something and like literally within 24 hours it's happening. So I don't know if that's me being psychic and feeling it coming or if I'm actually creating that. But either way, it's some powerful stuff. Okay, everyone? Very powerful. So this is about, you know, letting go of having to defend yourself and getting drawn into things in situations that are not good for us and that's what I mean you're going to be maybe tempted by old situations uh, people coming back from the past maybe uh, you may even still feel them in your energy that doesn't mean we need to reach out okay that's not what that means the way I am, interp am interpreting this now this is going to be a general reading but it may feel quite personal to some of you at times and that's wonderful if it does um, um I'm hearing the name Sharika. I was getting, I'm just gonna go in the names now. Dorinda, I'm getting a Willie. I'm getting, um, I was getting Desmond, Monse, De Donovan. Um, I'm getting, uh, I heard Tamisha earlier, I'm getting Barker. I'm also getting, um, I'm getting so many different names, right, Lamont. Um, I was getting like Andre or Andreas or An Andrea earlier um, since I've been out here. Um, and what else? I was getting, um, I ended up getting this very specific name. I'm forgetting the first name, but the last name was Whitaker. It might've been Kelly Whitaker. So that maybe that means something to you or something, but that's coming through. I'm also getting that game Pickup Sticks. Uh, maybe some of you played it when you're younger. It's like long plastic toothpicks, basically, and you dump them all out from this little like tube, um, and and then you just have to like pick up your colors and that sort of thing. So, um, I don't know why I'm getting that up, get that, but something's coming through. I could also be getting Daniel. I feel as though that's a name that comes up a lot. So here's how the channeling works for me. It's very, very much in the moment, out of the blue, boom. That's how I know it's not me. It's it's from um, a different source, right? Uh, it's from source, basically. Um, and it's, yeah, it's not, I'm getting Daniela. Earlier I was getting Clarissa too, or anything that like, and it ends in Issa or Issa. It was even the name, maybe Issa, like, or like, um, a name that has like an I and then a letter, an I and then a letter or something like that. And I don't know if I'm, oh, Isaiah too. So something, any of that, and okay. All right, and I'm just, I'm getting a lot of names. It makes me feel as though that's why I'm needing to do this reading because there needs to be more channeling. I've had requests for people to ask me to do more channeling. That can be tricky with, you know, general messages, but um, I have found that a lot of people really are connecting to those, so that's wonderful. I'm also getting Jefferson. And then a, a city or something that starts with like white, whitens, uh, with something something like that uh it could be a place of some kind or a last name but so that's what i'm going to say for now um i'm hearing hotchkiss i don't know if that's school or something or or what but that's that's also coming through wow lots of channel messages wanting to come through okay so um i'm happy for the people whose messages those are i really am so that's that's wonderful and i understand that it can be hard as a viewer sometimes when i'm saying all this stuff and it's not your message, but you know, it will be someday. I'm thinking that's because that's why you're here. And that's why I'm here to, for us to connect, to heal together, to grow together, um, and to get some insight together. Right. So I know I'm kind of like a little distracted, but this reading is going to go where it needs to go. And it's not going to be focused on love, career, finances necessarily. It's going to be mostly focused on this spiritual evolution um, that's, that's taking place for you. So, 
Oh, powerful times and let's keep going. Oh, what do we have? Ooh, good card, giraffe, one of my favorites. This is Archangel Jophiel. And this is about aspiring to higher knowledge and wisdom. The giraffe is a very intuitive animal. And um, see the, you know, the, the antenna here, and uh, that is like connection to the divine. Some of you may know and realize that your intuition is like hot right now, it is like on fire, you know? You're getting downloads all the time. And they're even coming through when you're sleeping for some of you. Give yourself plenty of quiet time, make space for it. You know, I, I myself sometimes have a hard time just tuning out everything, but the best way to do that is to be in nature. Um, because, you know, like you, you know, I wanna, it's like kind of like if I'm awake, I feel like I need to be doing something, but the doing something is also doing nothing and tuning into ourselves. That's actually work too. That's like spiritual work. That's connecting to yourself, to the higher realms. That's connecting to source. You know, that's, um, that's what that is. And the giraffe has um, a, a new perspective on things. The giraffe can see a lot more than we can just with our plain, um, you know, vision. Um, let's keep going and see what else we have. I want to get another... Okay, this is always do your best and you have a kitty cat on this card. So taking your life and enjoying it. All right. And I'm getting like, don't again, not getting mixed up in an old temptation or something that's just been you've been ruminating on. Because right now, oh, I'm getting right now an image. And this is how they're wanting me to explain it to you. Of like, releasing sort of like jumping out of a plane and have it in release in like, trusting the parachute will work that's what i'm getting right now so that that may mean something to some of you a parachute hot air balloons uh, skydiving any of that but it's like trusting in the universe trusting in the support of your guides and uh and trusting in yourself and all that work you've done it wasn't for nothing okay so let's not get lured back into things okay some of us need to hear that i'm actually getting the name justine right now as well okay so this is about you being alive, taking your life, enjoying it, knowing that you were born with the right to be happy. That's the whole purpose, to be happy, to love, to, to grow. So just be, T you know, take a risk, enjoy your life. That's really what matters right now. Setting yourself free, free from obstacles, free from anything that's low vibrational, that's pulling you backwards or this way or that way and, and not allowing you to stay aligned right? Tune into your body for those messages because, you know, if something is not for your greatest, highest good, you'll feel it in your body. 1313, 13, I just saw it. Could 44 also be something, but you may be seeing ones and threes that came through earlier. I had the date of November 8th as well, as well as 111 or even, so that could be 11 one, or it could be, you know, one, 11, it could be 111, just maybe you're seeing that on the clock or something. Hmm. But I feel like with 111, right now I'm, get, I'm getting that it's about um, past, present, and future and how they all work together in unison. But you, while living in the present, yes, there's the future, yes, there's the past, but um, I've heard this saying, and I don't know where it it's from but it was it's something like um when we live in the past no when we feel depressed we're living in the past when we feel anxious we're living in the future and when we're feeling um you know most centered it's when we're living in the present it's something to that agree to that effect and, and i truly believe that and i've noticed that in my own self it was like when i heard that i was like that's right that's right remember to anything you're doing right now that whole thoughts become things that is so critical right now. Okay, everyone. I think you've already been getting messages about that. Oh, 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 oh. I need to tell you this. Uh, don't take anything personally, okay? 
This is about becoming immune to the poison. Now, these cards, by the way, are um, based, they're from that book, The Four Agreements, which I know some of you have uh, read. I can feel it. It's by Don Miguel Ruiz, sorry, Don Miguel Ruiz. And um, this is Toltec Wisdom. So this is becoming immune to the poison. And that's what I'm saying, like not getting sucked into something that's from the past, maybe. Um, this is the, the whole world, you know, can gossip about you, can judge you, whatever. But if you don't take it personally, you're immune. Okay. And the more you practice being immune to it, the more immune you become. All right. So this is about um, staying in your truth, staying aligned, staying in your path. Right. All right. Let's go. Hydration is also key right now. I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist or doctor or anything like that. Seek medical support. Um, but overall, I'm hearing something about aqua, about being uh, hydrated right now in order to flush out toxins. And that includes uh, not just physically, but spiritually, mentally, emotionally, you know. Those of you who are also uh, Reiki practitioners, masters, teachers, um, I actually Reiki my water. I, I connect to Reiki while holding my water. Um, and this is something I learned to do very early on. I actually wrote the Reiki symbols on my water bottle and uh, connected with that energy and found that the water, they've actually done studies where water or soil that was Reiki, that had like Reiki infusion with it um, or connection to it was attuned to Reiki, so to speak. Um, those plants like grew, grew much better than the ones who did not receive Reiki. There's all kinds of Reiki studies out there showing the effectiveness of Reiki. Um, but my point is, is that anything you're putting into your environment, be it your physical environment or um, in your spiritual, emotional environment, any of that, anything, any external and internal environment, make sure it's of the highest form it's of a high vibration so if you are a reiki practitioner uh, it's amazing the the ways you can utilize the um utilize reiki which reiki by the way is universal life force energy it's something we all have access to but if you are a reiki practitioner a reiki master you've been attuned you've basically been uh hooked in to that uh directly so that you can access it at any time um, you can channel it at any time. So uh, while we all have access to healing powers and, you know, universal life force energy, um, Reiki masters and practitioners have actually gone through uh, a, an official, um, you know, sort of, uh, well, it's an attunement, they call it. So let's see. And that's one thing that makes Reiki work a little different than some of the other energy healing modalities. But you can, you can utilize Reiki or any sort of, just with your intention, maybe you're not a Reiki practitioner, but just using your intention to, you know, bless your food, to bless your water. Um, because you do raise the vibration, the frequency by doing that. And you know what? It just, again, shows, even if you don't believe in some sort of, you know, like universal life force energy or whatever, Believe in the power of your mind and of yourself and of your own energy to influence what's going on around you and within you, okay? That's what we're getting here. Now, look what we have. First out, we have the devil. This is... Okay, so this person, by the way, these chains don't look... They don't look too strong. And what that tells me, and the, the devil being in the back there like this, what I'm picking up off this card is... First of all, I'm seeing this person as the Empress. So maybe you do have a Libra or Taurus in your chart. Um, but this is about, and this is Capricorn energy as well, but this is about remembering the lessons and having felt them, really journeyed through them, right? Maybe you've had to go through the same cycle with, with uh, situations or people over and over, but this is really having that willpower and that peace with all the work you've done, all the chains that you've encountered in life, the obstacles, the, uh, I look at each one of these links as, you know, a step along the way. Um, that's, that's the person now is in charge of if this chain binds them, they can break free. They're not actually shackled here. This person can lift this right over their head and be done with it, leaving this, right? 
leaving that devil energy behind. Now the devil energy, it doesn't even have to do with religion necessarily. It's, it's about um, those things that you know are not in your greatest, highest good that really are impeding your, um, your healing and growth. But this is about your own actions, breaking the habit, avoiding temptation. There, this is about history repeating itself until we learn the lessons. Did I not say that earlier? I was saying that before. That sometimes we'll get, well, things will reappear just so that the universe knows, did you really mean it? Are you really over this person, this situation? Um, so this isn't about, um, you know, it's about, it's about like, this is a window of opportunity to get, to get, get out of um, a pattern and self-sabotage and self-limiting behavior, okay? That's what this is about. It's about like recognizing something that's maybe we're telling ourselves that's not totally truthful. Um, something that could be deep, deep down that's not good for us. It's about breaking the chains, escaping, you know, acting in a way that your higher self longs for, right? What's in line with your higher self? What else do we have from Tarot? Something about the first frost. Um, this is about those, when I hear first frost, I think of how water, first of all, I just saw a hummingbird, all right? Now the hummingbird, for, for those of you who know, I, I'm really into my birds here, and the hummingbird is about renewal. Um, this is about your dreams, this is new joy, being within reach, this is opportunity, and this is like promising success and new health. Now, what's interesting about what I was about to say, I had first frost, is when I think of frost, I think about, well, what is it? It's like, you know, it's, it's frozen water. It's, it's changed its state, right? It's changed its form. So it's a different kind of energy it's a different type of being and then we see hummingbird about renewal i'm feeling as though with the frost things are you know frozen right and with a frost that can actually kill vegetation and think that sort of thing so we want to make sure that as we're ascending as we're renewing as we're stepping out onto our path it, we are not being frozen in time because that literally can like suck our souls it can drain our energy some of you i feel and i've seen it again in lives of people i know at this time it's coming through so strongly with people and people i've done readings with in person i do in-person readings by the way um and you know it's like that one little tiny corner. It came through in the weekly Libra reading, that one little aspect that we know it's there. Maybe we haven't been honest completely with ourselves as far as our healing. Some of you have been, please, you know, I don't want to be criticized for that, that you've done all the healing and that's it. But um, some of us haven't, and some of us need this reminder and it's, it's as though we thought maybe we completely let go of something, but it's, but we haven't. It's that one little tiny thing. It's almost like flick. Now your whole life can open up. Okay. Uh, Lucy as well. I'm hearing Lucy Lucinda. Yeah. Sometimes we just, we are not even aware that there's something still there, but then when it comes up in a tarot reading or something, when I'm working with people, it's like, Oh, you're right. And then I get comments after the readings that these people feel so much better because it was this little thing. That's the theme right now in these tarot readings I'm doing for, for clients that it's just coming up over and over. People are ready for the cosmic shift. They're ready for this opportunity of power and uh, renewal. And we just want to make sure we're prepared for it in all ways. Like we might be ready and wanting to call it in, but we do need to make sure that we've definitely cleaned out what it is we need to clean out even if it's cleaning your decluttering that sort of thing but making room for what you do want and what is great for you you have the page of wands so this is an opportunity this is you cooking up something good 
right? This is um, this is knowing w which ingredients work well together and which ones are explosive and taking action on that. If it means avoiding something, right? If it's avoiding something, this could have to do within a relationship, sure. Um, I'm getting something about sauce and this came up in another reading not that long ago, but like marinara sauce, somebody making sauce, almost like um, part of their culture or something. I don't know if it's like marinara sauce or what other kinds of sauce, if you make great curry, which maybe, I, I don't know, but, and also getting sweet potato, almost like um, a nickname though. And I'm hearing something important about a Sunday brunch or some sort of, um, yeah, I'm getting Sunday brunch or yeah, I, I don't know. That just comes in, you know, it's people's messages come in and I'm not here to judge them, but Sunday brunch is coming through. It could also be too that you want to start doing uh, like a regular family dinner or brunch or something. Again, there could also be something that's been celebrated or being celebrated, maybe Father's Day or Mother's Day or a graduation, something. There's some sort of event here. But with the Page of Wands, <clears throat> that's fire energy. So it's it's, I'm not going to get too much into the signs though, really. So if you're wanting to know about fire signs, of course you can look that up, but, um, it is, it is Sagittarius Leo Aries. Um, the page of wands is about, you know, the value of putting an idea into practice. This is about, you know, if you've been feeling stuck, using your ideas, putting them into practice and finding inspiration in everyday things. We also have Seven of Cups. A lot of opportunities here. You've got Water Energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Now, this person is like daydreaming. Allow yourself time to daydream. It's okay. Uh, you know, I had a friend ask me just yesterday, is it okay or not? Yes, but they were basically judging themselves. It was yesterday, but they were basically judging themselves. Not asking permission, but judging themselves for daydreaming now and then. And I'm like, you've got to daydream. We have to allow are um, what makes us feel good. We need to make time for that right now. It's very important we make time to savor the simplicities in life. If it's a cup of tea at, in the evening um, on your deck, if it's, um, you know, uh, a scented candle, if it's, um, you know, of course, I'm a Libra, so I'm like all these, you know, what's, you know, like all sensual type things, like warm, sweet, and, and smelling wonderful, and, you know, I'm picturing all these cozy fabrics and things and art and things, you know, that's the Libra, but, <laughs> but yeah, beauty, if it's, if it's connecting in nature, if it's, uh, you know, uh, weaving for some of you, I don't know why weaving came up, but that came through something, maybe your craft, you create something, making sure you're allowing, not allowing, but making that a priority, making sure you're making that a priority. And again, this has to do with where are you putting your energy, where to put your energy. Some of you may not be clear on that right now, but I feel as though you are very clear and maybe you're here just for reminders. That's a lot of times why I feel people turn to tarot. They want those reminders, right? You've already that you already know about. This is about being uh, grounded. This is using your imagination, putting action into uh, or words and thoughts into action. This is about um, you know not falling prey to magical thinking, but allowing yourself to dream. This is um, happiness in your reality. Finding the happiness in your reality. Not being fooled by any sort of illusion. Now we want to be careful because when we see, I'm going to talk a little bit about a relationship right now, okay? It could even be your relationship to yourself. I don't know. But for those of you where maybe it is a, a person, uh, um, don't get fooled again. That is a hard lesson for some of us. I'm getting, I'm hearing Aries right now, but this could actually be really any sign. You could also be dealing with a cusper, someone on the cusp. Um... But this is not being led off your path right now. Choosing to stay stationed, choosing to stay put, all right? This is about being comfortable where you are. 
honoring again all that that work you've done to unhook yourself from whatever this is could be thought patterns could be something from the past could be fears about the future could be substance abuse or usage sorry substance usage it could be um, a lot of different things don't get fooled by an illusion if someone's coming back from the past that you've done all this work on to overcome or even if it's a job from the past and now they want you back or you're reconsidering it because they're hiring again or something put yourself back there in all ways possible mentally physically spiritually cognitively how did that actually really feel allow yourself to go down memory lane only briefly only to extract those lessons that's something i talk about a lot i just saw 30 30 so again 33 is coming through six harmony balance was this give and take was this equal did you feel fulfilled from whatever this was are you getting anything back is it time to walk away from this completely maybe you feel like you have but have you these are the questions we need to ask ourselves right now have we really are we being true to ourselves Imagine yourself with this page of wands. Now I'm seeing 1111 in the background. Remind yourself, you are supported. You are divinely supported at this time. You have that higher knowledge. You have that wisdom. You've done the work, people. You've done the work. Now it's just about staying on your path for some of you. We have the King of Cups here awesome energy all right this is someone taking the time to love themselves to really be fully aware of what and who keeps them in their most um pure and high and loving sort of energy you know this is somebody who um isn't afraid to express feelings. This is someone who, um, you know, wears their heart on their sleeve, so to speak. But this is someone who has, has love to give. All right, this is someone who has love to give. This is someone who has, um, they have that, you know, that confidence about them. Male, female, could be, doesn't matter. They, them. This is about people not remembering what you said or did, but how you made them feel. So remember, how did something or someone, I was just saying this, how did something or someone make you feel? Is that something you want to revisit? Is it worth maybe being knocked off your path or having your path then blocked? Because I will tell you, being in low vibrational energy if that's what we want to call it i don't really like labeling energy but if we want to be in something that you just know isn't for your good it's not for your best interest you just know you just don't feel good when you're doing it you feel less energetic you feel like someone's just taking 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 when we're allowing that in it will actually affect every aspect of our lives we may notice we get more headaches stomach aches we may notice that bad things start happening we may notice that um, our business opportunities suddenly shrink. I just saw 333. This is super important. So now he's at 3333. Three, three. So, so many threes are coming through for you in this reading. I feel as though um, we really need to have our energy protected at this time. We can't at this time afford to give away our goodness, our love, our attention, our money, our time, our efforts to the wrong energy right now. We want to make sure that we sit down and we write it out, say it out, speak it out, dance it out, sing it out. I don't know what, however you um, help things to manifest. This is a time we really need to be doing. We need to be serious about it. We need to be so careful where we're putting our energy. I can't stress that enough. So I'm sorry if I'm like a broken record here, but this needs to be said. Also, someone may play the harmonica or they may find harmony through music. 
All right, so that's coming through for someone as well. I'm getting something about a Wrangler as well. Maybe it's a Jeep Wrangler or something about Wrangler if it's a name of something else. Um, I, you could also be really wrestling with a decision you need to make about something or someone in your immediate past or distant past. I'm hearing something about someone very close to you hurting you. And each time it's happened, it's harder to get back up. The image they're giving me is someone riding a bicycle. And they fall and they get back up. And then they fall again, they get back up. And the conditions they're riding their bicycle in, the more they ride, the harder it is to not fall. Because there's so much resistance in the environment from this person or this situation. There's something very unsettling but you're like, no, I got this. I can do it. Or they're telling you, we've done this before. We've done through, we've gone through this before. You know, you're overreacting. I'm just channeling straight up right now. So some people, this is like your story. Maybe it's for one person. I don't know, but it could even be self-doubt where it's like, no, you've done this before. Just hang in there, hang in there. Remember, be loyal. You remember you've been through a lot with this person, this situation, you can do it. And it's like, at what point, I mean, how battered and bruised not literally, um, at least I hope not. How, how, um, how many times do we have to fall with a particular situation before we say, you know what, I think I'm going to try it another way. It's too windy to ride my bike right now. It's, it's at least to this person's house or this job or whatever. I, I need to figure out another way, one that doesn't keep hurting me. Right, because maybe you're taking all the precautions. You're wearing padding. You're you're trying to go out. You check the weather. You try to make sure things are, you know, um, in agreement with what it is you want to do with this situation, this person, your goals. But for whatever reason, you're being met with inhospitable conditions. And guess what? We can't control the weather. We can't control what other people do. Um, we have to learn how to grab the handlebars ourselves and go back home or go to a place where it is more comfortable. And that's not chickening out. That's not being disloyal. Um, that's not um, you uh, having not done the work. It's not, you're not giving up on some, it's, it's, you don't, if it's something that's not giving back or someone is not giving back, you're not giving up. You're standing up for yourself. You're taking your power back. You're deciding, hey, I need to go another direction because I keep getting like thrown to the ground, you know, on this road, in this wind, in this storm that I keep encountering. Maybe with, again, I feel like it's the same situation for you or person or something dragging you back from your past that keeps almost, I don't want to say taunting you, but coming back up and it's coming back up so you can fully heal from it for, so you can really, um, I don't want to say get closure because a lot of the times people confuse closure with like, they need to have a final conversation. Mm. You don't necessarily need to have a final conversation with someone to have closure. All that matters is that you've had the conversations you need and taken the steps you need your, for yourself, with yourself, with your God, with your divine connection, your angels, your team, your spiritual team, your loved ones, your true loved ones, your true tribe, if you will. That's what matters. That's where you get your closure. You're not necessarily going to get closure from that situation or person that has not ever made, not ever made it clear that they value you for you. You're not going to get closure from that right? Not in that way. Now, again, I'm not a therapist or anything. Maybe some of you are in therapy and you're working on, you know, getting closure. I have an issue with the word closure sometimes because I feel as though people, when they say closure, they don't recognize it as necessarily like being okay with the completion of a cycle. That's how I feel closure is. Um, some people feel as though, and I did this for a very long time, very long time, that I needed that final conversation. It's almost like I was waiting for certain words to be said or something because you know what it came down to? I was in disbelief over the uh, situation, over the actions of this person, over the lies, over the manipulation, over the lack of empathy. I was in disbelief. 
And we have to think carefully about when we're seeking closure, at what cost does closure come? At what cost does closure come? I feel it doesn't have to come at a cost. I feel that it comes when we actually really give ourselves time to safely explore in those deepest, darkest corners, shedding light on those aspects of ourselves in that situation that have hurt so deeply that we're almost attached to them. They're just there, or we're just not really fully, we don't even want to give it control. Maybe we've let go of a person or a situation. We don't, we don't want to give that them control again by saying, yes, they're still affecting my life. But they might be. That energy could still be influencing you. Who knows? Maybe they're still trying to connect with you energetically. Maybe you feel that. Maybe you're feeling um, that you're never going to be able to shake that. Well, you can. But you've got to really shine that light on it. I used in a, um, in, uh, like a metaphor, I think in the Libra reading, weekly reading this week, um, might've been that one, maybe someone else's, but it was, it was about how, um, some things can, you know, about like mold. It was the Libra weekly. I'm getting a lot of similarities between this and the Libra weekly. I think we need to be so clear about everything that's in our environment. What really dig down, explore ourselves, explore our environment externally, internally, what stays, what goes, maybe write it out, speak it out loud maybe, or talk to a trusted confidant, maybe a professional, something, or a healer of some kind, or just your friend, or your, I'm getting sister, daughter, mother, grandma, somebody, auntie, somebody you really, like really trust. And, that's how things are really going to change when you actually it's like this poison from deep within i'm just getting that oh and actually become immune to poison i almost picture it as like when you're overcoming an illness um and you still have that lingering cough and then it becomes less and less but every once in a while you still feel like um just don't still don't quite feel 100% every now and then maybe it's not every day anymore but it's like every now and then you just feel it again maybe something in your chest and you're like oh and then it kind of goes away whatever it's like this is gonna sound gross but like hack up that big ball of phlegm for good get rid of it there's one last like chunk of something some ickiness some gross disgusting whatever that you just know you need to release in order to freely breathe and be again to fully be, believe, and live again. That's what needs to go. I don't think I've ever done a reading, guys, where, and gal, people, sorry. I don't think I've ever done a reading, people, where I've been this, like, raw, real, and just sort of almost, like, counseling, you know? Um, but this needs to happen. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help all of us in the ways that I know how, through Reiki, through these readings, through other divination um, tools, through keeping myself centered and grounded in nature, through really assessing my own environment, being very impeccable with my words the best I can so that I can always do my best to help you do yours. Um, and I don't say that from a place of, oh, I'm better than you. It's nothing, any, nothing remotely even close to that. It's, I'm a natural teacher and I became an actual teacher. It's like my goal, my purpose for being here is to help people and to teach people from my own journey. I go through the things I go through, I think, in order to help others. I just saw 44. I really hope a lot of you are able to connect to this. Um, 44, you know, you're on the right path. You're protected. You have assistance from higher realms. You have my assistance. You know, I'm always tuning into Reiki during these readings. And that means, as someone had asked a question, or maybe I'm feeling that coming on, but 
That means I utilize Reiki to make sure I am the cleanest, clearest channel for you for these messages, that they are coming from the most high vibration, that um, they, they have nothing to do with me or my ego, that they're from a very pure place. I set intentions for this. I meditate to practice self Reiki to stay connected to that highest vibration to source to universal life force energy so that we can all remind ourselves that we are all natural healers. We all have that potential. I really hope this is bringing you healing and comfort. I have many more messages for you. I feel like we're actually done with the tarot part. I do. We're going to go on to some other messages, including this one. Life is an expression of you. Life is more than existing. How can you feel more alive? How can you feel more like the true you? This King of Cups, Queen of Cups. What do you need to do? By the way, it's card one. And that is the number of, you know, new cycles, new beginnings. Being authentic, okay? This is about you are, you are this. You are the expression of life. Follow your breath. Follow your breath to guide yourself, ground yourself. Life's an expression of you, okay? It's more than just the physical. It's, you know, flesh, blood, bones. It's, it's about the essence of thought and breath combined with your feelings and emotions. So for life to flow, we need to free ourselves up to breathe. If you remember I talked about hacking up that big glob of phlegm? Clear it out so you can believe, live, breathe again. I thank you thank you so much spirits guides angels reiki for connecting me to this um act of divination and uh expression of truth soul truth for people right now because what we were just talking about is exactly what this card is saying all of these cards every single one of them has something to do with the other it's putting together this story beautiful embroidery here <sighs> focus on the truth that lies deep within listen to the the drum beat of your heartbeat feel the breath help help it expand you right let it allowing it to expand you in all ways possible allowing it to allow you to be connected to life again to really live not just go through the motions you know i made a conscious decision a few of no, like two years ago whenever i got through some major major grief tragedy horrific shock i mean tower after tower a lot of a lot of deaths actually of physical bodies of loved ones though their energy is still with me at all times. Um, I had to make a conscious decision to actually live, not just keep myself alive, but to actually fully live again. And that's when I decided I needed to focus more on helping other people too. Again, because I'd always focused on that, but for a while, I was just trying to survive. And sometimes when we're trying to survive, we're not actually living. And that's not very motivating to just be in survival mode. I just saw a yellow butterfly. This is major change for you. This is you getting back into your power fully. Controlling your environment but also being in the flow. And what I mean by controlling, you're gonna control the flow of things in a way because you're going to not allow that phlegm to live any longer in your system, in your lungs. This is, I know it's gross, 
It's like coughing that up and leaving it there for good. That's it. Done. 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 We have to make conscious decisions on every aspect of our life. And yes, sometimes you just have to like give it up to, to the, to the divine. I absolutely do that as well. Um, that's like almost first and foremost, but I do have to be very careful about the thoughts I allow in the people I allow in. I don't want any other, you know, I mean, towers aren't a bad thing because I'll tell you from those towers, it was like someone just took, uh, I always pictured like sort of a toy box and they were like all my toys in it or something. And I don't know why I did toy. Cause maybe I felt like so vulnerable and young when all of this happened, even though I was a full grown adult for, for this series of towers. Um, it felt like someone just took all my toys and just dumped them all out all over the floor and took away the toy box. And I had no way of cleaning it up. I had no, I didn't know where, what went where. I didn't know what, you know, you could look at his puzzle pieces. Like you had this like picture in mind of this puzzle or whatever. And then someone just like came around and crumpled it all up and threw it on the floor and was like, there, deal with it. That's what it felt like. And I had to put myself back together from a completely different place because everything had changed. And I feel sometimes some of us, we do go through those moments in order to ascend, in order to evolve. And that's why I don't fear towers because there were some things that I really needed to work on and it took some real devastation in a very shocking fashion, apparently repeatedly for me to understand, for me to really grow, for me to let go, for me to live again. We don't always get answers as to why things happen the way they do. We're not gifted that. But would it really be such a blessing to know exactly why things happen and not have to even take any control over anything? We have to be in our power because we're true manifestors, every single one of us. And what we do influences everything and everyone. We're all connected. And that's one reason I love Reiki is because it, it helps us. It helps me realize and fully feel that we really are connected. Everything is energy. And that's why you can infuse Reiki into anything and everything you do. Um, any sort of, you know, energy work. You really become more aware. You become more compassionate to yourself and others. I'm going to get you some more messages here. We have a message for you. Let's ask ourselves together. What is the most limiting belief keeping me from what I want right now? Or what is that one little thing that needs to go? What's our phlegm ball? <laughs> Sorry, but it's like, <laughs> what do we need to cough up and let go of? What story are you telling yourself when you think about dreams? What's the first limiting thought that comes to your mind when you think about dreams, when you think about what you really want? If you're not living the life you desire, it's because some piece of you doesn't believe it. Something in you doesn't believe it and is holding you back. And it's like that muck, that residual ick that needs to be let go of, released. That sticky, gross thing deep within, cough it out so you can fully breathe, expand, live, believe. It's time to upgrade. So look it right in the eye. Although, I don't know, if you have a weak stomach, you might not wanna look at this gross phlegm ball. No, but it's all a metaphor anyway. So where did the belief come into your mind? Was it from childhood? Was it from someone else? Is it just habit? Are you not sure? What, what can you replace it with? Because when, you know, as a behavior specialist in education throughout the years, um, I did study applied behavior analysis. And if you're going to ask a student or train a student or any, anyone, anything really, 
to not do a certain behavior, you need to provide them with a replacement behavior. Because the reason that we engage in behaviors is because they are reinforcing in some way. They're strengthened by something in our environment. There's a reason we do things. We don't just do things for no reason, right? Behavior speaks, beliefs speak. So, you know, in behavioral terms, you know, sometimes we, we engage in behavior for access to something we want or to avoid something we don't want. You know, um, maybe it's for attention, maybe it's to escape. There are a few different ways or several different reasons why we engage in certain behaviors. And if we're going to eliminate a behavior or a belief, which a belief is a behavior, if we're going to really do that, we need to replace it with something else that's, that's going to um, serve the same purpose, really. All right? So... I'm just trying to explain this in terms for the non-behavior analysts, okay? <laughs> so what new belief are you ready to adopt? If you're clearing something out, what are you making room for? All right? How is it going to change your results? Imagine it, feel it, believe it, become it. Remember, your belief is the root of your results. So own it, heal what needs to be healed, upgrade, free yourself from the ick, the muck, the chaos, the chain. You know, I'm, get, I'm getting a uh, mosquito right now coming in and mosquito has to do with self-worth. This is about protecting yourself from the annoying voice within or buzzing from others. This is protecting yourself from, from that. This is, this is um, not letting anyone or anything come in and try to damage your self-worth. Irritations, issues that become aggravating, don't let them fester. Let's try to all em embrace or um, address them right away so that they don't have time to bite us, to irritate us, to even stay with us for any longer than we want them. Focusing on our personal joys. Get you another message here. I'm gonna get you a spiritual symbol. So if this spiritual symbol comes up, it may bring you back to this reading. This is about storm. <laughs> well, some of us are getting storms coming up, weather-wise. And remember, I already talked about a storm. I mentioned a storm about when we were riding our bicycle, like into the eye of a storm or something, or into a place where we know we're not gonna get anywhere. We're just gonna get knocked down again. And I believe all in that resilience, getting back up, getting back up, yes. But when you get back up, are you gonna continue to ride into the eye of the storm? Or are you gonna choose another path? that you know will have a better outcome, or even if you don't know it'll have a better outcome, it'll have a different outcome, right? So this is about clearing the air, calmness, balance being restored. You know, it's about peacefulness after, low battery mode just came on for me, sorry. It's about um, peacefulness after a, a storm, transitioning, restoration. How are you going to you know get your get your energy back here we have some advice for you card 19 again a one this other card was card 87 by the way the storm this is a you're being advised to eliminate distractions to stop shining light on things you're not right we're talking about shining light earlier right how can you reclaim your power I'm hearing Shelly. I'm also getting Woods. Woods. And I want to get you another card here. 
This card is star seed. What lights you up? These are the things we want to focus on, not what brings us down, not what hurt us or did us wrong, did us dirty. What lights you up? I'm telling you, you explore that, you find that, you claim that, and you rule everything. You rule your life. Because you do anyway. We have star mother here as well. This is about how can you mother yourself, be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself. And let's get um, another card here for you. And then I think we'll close this out. <laughs> okay. Release other people's emotions. Ask yourself, is this emotion mine? Is this even mine? Exhale uncomfortable feelings that are not yours so they don't linger in your body. Inhale light in space. Thank you for the synchronicities here. Spirit, spirit guides, angels, guides, God. Thank you, divine. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing this message to the collective because this is all, again, it's like tying it up neatly in a bow. We're getting the same messages over and over about breathing. I've never, it's not like I have a bunch of decks out that relate to lungs, you know? This is how it is though. This is why I'm called to do this message. This is why you're tuning in. If you love it, claim it. Give me a like, a thumbs up, um, subscribe, comment. And even if you don't, just live your best life. Cough up that phlegm ball, move on. Breathe freely again. Do things that invigorate you, that connect you back to yourself, your true authentic self and do it without any sort of hesitation or, or shame or embarrassment. Don't dim your light for anybody. Live your light. May you all be blessed and shine brightly. Thank you for this opportunity to connect for you.